my darlings. For today's video, I'm going to talk about some key nutrients and explore their connections to ADHD. I'll also give some examples of foods that are rich in these nutrients and how to incorporate them to make a nutritious ADHD friendly meal. To give some context, there's research that suggests a potential link between overall dietary patterns and ADHD. Specifically, nutrient-dense diets may have a positive impact on ADHD symptoms, while diets that are high in foods with little nutritional value may worsen symptoms. Our guts are responsible for producing and storing neurotransmitters like dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine, which are believed to be lower in individuals with ADHD. And what we eat directly impacts how these neurotransmitters are formed, how they function, and how they get used. As a result, the production of neurotransmitters can affect ADHD symptoms. I'm not going to go into the details of this research because that's boring. But if you're interested in reading these research articles, I included them in the description box below. Before we get started, I just want to give a huge thanks and appreciation for 550 subscribers! Ah! My initial goal was to hit 500 subscribers in six months, but thanks to you guys, I exceeded that goal in just two weeks. So thank you again. I love and appreciate you guys. And the next goal is to get to 1,000 subscribers. Alrighty, let's get into it. Grab some harvest snaps, like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, and let's get going. The first nutrient to enter the stage is protein. The essential nutrient laying the foundation for strength and vitality. Dietary proteins are made up of amino acids, and those amino acids steal the spotlight. Crafting not only muscles, but the messengers to your brain. Take the amino acids tryptophan and tyrosine, for instance. Both are crucial for cooking up dopamine and serotonin, those feel-good neurotransmitters we talked about earlier. Eating enough protein ensures that our bodies have enough amino acids to make those neurotransmitters. And where do we find this amino acid extravaganza? In a protein-packed pantry full of nuts and nut butters, seeds, beans, and legumes, soy delights like tofu, and a sea of fish. They can also be found in poultry like chicken and turkey, and let's not forget the savory sensation of meats like beef and pork. Dairy and eggs also earn their spot on the protein podium. So for those with ADHD, ensuring a protein-packed diet isn't just a meal. It's a strategic move to keep those neurotransmitters in check. Next up. Carbohydrates. Why did the brain start a bakery? Because it needed a steady supply of carbohydrates. <laughs> <clears throat> the brain relies on glucose as its main source of energy, which is primarily found in carbohydrates. Picture your brain as a carb connoisseur, always craving that energy boost from glucose to keep the mental gears turning. And if you ever tried a low carb escapade, you might recall the brain fog, the headache, the fatigue fiasco. You see, when the carb supply dwindles, so does the glucose. And that's when the risk of impaired brain function enters the scene. It's like the brain's way of saying, hey yo, where my glucose at? That's like asking your brain to run on fumes. Definitely a recipe for cognitive chaos. And not the good kind. For ADHDers already dealing with their own cast of brain and fatigue characters, not getting enough carbs can feel like turning down the lights on an already dim stage. It's like forgetting to fuel the star of the show. There's two types of carbohydrates, simple carbs and complex carbs. Simple ones get digested fast, giving a quick burst of energy. It's like a rapid boost, but if you have too much, you might crash later. On the other hand, complex carbohydrates take more time to digest, providing a steadier release of energy to the bloodstream. While carbs strut their stuff in various food groups like fruits, vegetables, dairy, nuts, and beans, there's a spotlight reserved for the starchy and grainy MVPs. The lineup of carbohydrate-rich delights include rice, pasta, bread, potatoes, corn, tortillas, and the crunchy crescendo of cereal. And without this VIP menu of carbs, the ADHD brain might throw an attention tantrum, like a disco without the right beats. But how those starchy carb stars are processed makes a difference. Take white rice, for example. It goes through a processing that removes a lot of the good stuff like fiber. Now compare that to brown rice, which is less processed. It keeps more of those vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Speak of the devil, let's talk about fiber. This indigestible carbohydrate is like a traffic cop to your gut, slowing things down and preventing sugar spikes and crashes. But wait, there's more. It's also a brain booster and the architect of Healthy Gut City. 
Fiber promotes a healthy gastrointestinal tract, or GI tract, which allows for better neurotransmitter synthesis. So yeah, fiber is the goat for both your colon and your brain's pleasure. So when you're loading up on some whole grains, crunching on fruits and vegetables, or enjoying a hearty bowl of beans, know that you're not just feeding your body, you're nourishing your brain and keeping the neurotransmitter party alive and kicking. And while fiber is crucial for digestive health and overall well-being, it doesn't fit the traditional definition of a nutrient because our bodies can absorb it for energy or other physiological functions. Want to give your gut more love? Consider adding probiotics to your diet. If fiber is a superhero, then probiotics are the trusty sidekick of the digestive world. Like fiber, probiotics aren't nutrients, but these microscopic maestros ensure your gut remains the epicenter of vitality. Their mission? Maintaining gut health, creating a flourishing environment for beneficial bacteria, and surprise, supporting the synthesis of neurotransmitters. It's like a microscopic marvel brought to you by the probiotic performers. The creamy tang of Greek yogurt to the spicy kick of kimchi the tangy crunch of pickled vegetables to the fizzy refreshment of kombucha, and the smooth goodness of kefir to the cultured charm of sour cream. They're all very important probiotics to the gut community. Get it? Like, VIP, very important probiotics. Uh, <clears throat> it's time to put the spotlight on our next international nutrient superstar, fat. Fats have had a bad name in the past, but they're not the villains that they're thought out to be. Actually, they're the complete opposite. Fat is an essential nutrient that our bodies and brain need. Fats are crucial for the structural integrity of the brain. These brainy builders create myelin sheets, the protective coats for neurons. Myelin sheets facilitate rapid and efficient transmission of impulses along the nerves. It's like a cozy winter jacket for your nerve cells, allowing impulses to zip along nerves with speed of a well-oiled slide, making sure your brain's wiring is top notch. So think of that as the architects behind your brain's skyscrapers. They're not just there for flavor, they're the structural engineers ensuring everything stands tall and strong. High fat foods like avocado, cheese, nuts and nut butters, vegetable oils like olive, canola, and sunflower oil, you're fortifying your brain's natural defense. Now that's what I call a brainy indulgence. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, omega-3 fatty acids. Ever heard of brain food that's also brainy? Enter omega-3s, which can be found in walnuts, flaxseed, chia seeds, and cold water fish like salmon. These healthy fats don't just swim upstream, they dive straight into brain health. This particular type of fat can bolster brain structure and cognitive function. And here's the kicker, they're not just flexing their muscles in the brain gym, they're also peacemakers, reducing inflammation like dietary diplomats. All right, darlings, we just dive deep into the nutrient wonderland for ADHD. But hold on to your thinking caps because we're not done yet. If you're scratching your head wondering how on earth to turn this brain dump of nutritional information into a gourmet meal triumph, fear no more. I am here to swoop in and save the day with just one magical word, my plate. Well, that's two words, but the, the tool that I'm gonna refer to puts my and plate together into one word. Moving on. If you're an ADHD or who prefers to unalive multiple birds with one stone, then my plate is the tool for you. My plate recommends filling half your plates with fruit and or vegetables, a quarter of the plate grains, the other quarter protein, and one serving of dairy. You're basically covering all the nutrients we discussed by using this tool. Fruits and vegetables cover carbohydrates and fiber. Grain covers starchy carbohydrates and sometimes some protein. Protein covers, well, protein, but some protein sources have fats and maybe some omega-3 fatty acids. And dairy also contains some protein, as well as some carbohydrates and some of them probiotics. One example of a meal that uses my plate and encompasses all the nutrients we talked about today is salmon, which has protein, healthy fats, and omega-3 fatty acids, brown rice, which is a starchy carbohydrate, a grain, and contains fiber, roasted broccoli drizzled with olive oil, vegetable, carbohydrate, although low in carbs, fiber, and healthy fats. And on the side, low-fat Greek yogurt, which is dairy, protein, and probiotics, topped with some frozen mango, which is a fruit, carbohydrate, and fiber. Feeling hungry for more inspiration? I've got a treasure chest of healthy, ADHD-friendly recipes waiting for you. Check out the link in the description box below for a feast of ideas. And while you're down there, go and snag my weekly meal planning checklist.
your secret weapon for a seamless culinary week. And hey, if you missed my last video, an ADHDer's guide to successful meal planning, don't worry. It's the perfect roadmap to seamlessly incorporate these recipes into your meal plan. All right, that's all I have for you today, folks. And it's important to note that everyone's experience with ADHD is different. And whatever nutrition advice that works for some people may not work for others. If you're looking for personalized nutrition advice, it's advisable to consult a registered dietitian who practices one-on-one -on -one nutrition counseling. Not me, though. Every dietitian's got a niche, and nutrition counseling just isn't for me. I prefer to chase my dream of giving general ADHD nutrition advice on YouTube from my bedroom. If you thought this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with everybody you know. Your friends, family, siblings, aunties, uncles, cat, fish, dog, chicken, turkeys, raccoon, and don't forget to drop your thoughts in the comments and hit that subscribe button for more content like this. It helps me immensely. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.